in this video we head to the principality for part 7 of my my team career mode for a wet monaco qualifying to kick off the weekend <laughs> to my my team career mode as you can see on your screen right now we're rocking a new livery on the car it's one of the liveries i unlocked in the podium pass so i just i decided to use it put it the colors and i think it looks a lot nicer than our previous livery at the spanish grand prix an upgrade that was supposed to come for this episode has failed on the aero it was a major one which was annoying and after that Spanish Grand Prix and after the Chinese Grand Prix my thinking was let's do some durability but into qualifying then for the Monaco Grand Prix let's just say what's harder than Monaco Monaco in the wet and the game society had just gone there you go but to be honest I thought this was a great opportunity, opportunity to get a decent qualifying as you can see there finish our first lap because every time we've had a wet qualifying we have done really well and the car has performed in the wet which is good so I did have some hope coming into this qualifying as we cross the line and we are going to get into Q2 we set the 8th fastest lap time and we progress to Q2 then Guan Yu Joe gets knocked out down and now into Q2 you can see we've actually gone purple in that middle sector now rounds the final corner and up to the line and the track it weren't really improving but it wasn't getting worse it was just staying consistently we actually set the first lap time in Q2 but that's not going to stand because we were the first driver to set a lap time as we round the final corner then for our final run I believe this is and we cross the line and for the very first time I believe we are going to be into Q3 we go 8th once again and you see there Lewis Hamilton Lando Norris for short both McLarens fell as well into Q3 then slightly odd if once normally we would probably just be doing the race by now but our very first run is gonna put us into P3 it's a very good lap and we did a second run but we didn't improve so we will be starting the Monaco Grand Prix from P7 our, our best result a proper road race, and in the true meaning of the word. That was how Mr Monaco, the late great Graham Hill, once described this iconic event. The cars we drive have come a long way in the intervening half century, but still we race on those same public roads beside the Mediterranean Sea. There's no victory more coveted than that of the Monaco Grand Prix. We're on the French Riviera once more this weekend at the two mile long Circuit de Monaco. The cars climb around 40 meters up through Beau Rivage, onto the casino, and then descending down towards the harbor through sector two. It's a very short run from pole position to the first of the 19 corners here, seven to the left and 11 to the right. There's one single DRS zone as well, so don't expect that to make overtaking any easier today. Anthony Davidson is here once again for today's Grand Prix. Why don't we discuss McLaren? What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within that team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do. And that's definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. An immense lap from Lewis Hamilton yesterday puts him on pole position, and P2 goes to Daniel Ricciardo, a strong showing from the Australian. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Leclerc, Albon, Max Verstappen and Bottas, Brown, Vettel, Ocon and Sergio Perez, Stroll, Sainz, Lando Norris and Kvyat, Gasly, Raikkonen, Kevin Magnussen and Roman Grosjean, Russell, Giovinazzi, Joe and Nicholas Latifi. 
it's almost time for those five red lights to go out. Then let's see who can prevail today. So the strategy then for this Monaco Grand Prix is saying to do mediums onto hard course. We have everyone has free tire choice because it was a wet Q2. But I wanted to do wanted to start on the soft, go to the mediums because of course that was kind of the go to strategy on F1 2019. So I thought let's try and make it work. But as you can see on the graphic, the, t the soft really can't go that far. So I have to see as the five red lights come on and it's lights out and away we go. It's Hamilton v Ricardo at the start as they head down. We're going to go down the inside of Valtteri Bottas and Max Verstappen there. And now we're side by side with Alexander Albon. We can't get Albon there. Round the casino then. We go now and we're right on the back of the Red Bull of Alexander Albon we're into P5 into Mirabeau and now into the Lions hairpin and we can't do anything there as everyone chundles through the best camera angle on the game watching everyone jostle for position through the, through the slowest corner on the F1 calendar now we are right on the back. We're going to go for our classic move then in the, at the Nobel chicane. We're on the outside and we're going to go round the outside of Alexander Albon at the back through the swimming pool now. And we are up into a P4. Just one place off a podium position then. Would you believe that? If you told me that in Spain, I'd have been very happy because... Coming off of Spain, we did get our first points, we finished P7. So, we really have carried that momentum over and we were actually pulling away from Alban. And now you can see we've skipped all the way on to lap 12. And we will pit at the end of this lap because, let me tell you, I tried to stretch out the tyres, but to be honest, they were dead. They were just awful. I was get, getting wheel spin out of every single corner. So we will pit and a slight strategy change because I, I didn't think the medium was going to last. I did kind of anticipate getting the sauce much further but we couldn't. So we are going to have to change our strategy and go into the hard tyres till the end. The thing that is worrying me now though is that we are going to come out. We're in some space here but there is a big, big pack up the road that we're going to have to get through and whilst we're going to be getting through them potentially we are going to lose out to the two Red Bulls that will have to fight their way back through and um, that can now they can go further they're on the mediums so whilst we're trying to overtake all of these they're just been going to be managing their pace as we go down the inside of Giovinazzi at the hairpin did that kind of like it was nothing there but that was very, very hard, to, I'll, let, I'll tell you that, for one thing, just holding my breath, as, there we go, on Roman Grosjean, in Tarascas, and now we're on the back of Kimi Raikkonen now, Raikkonen, not really going to make it difficult for us, hopefully, he does like to hang on to positions, so hopefully we can get him hit here into turn one, but we couldn't and now we are skipping on them through round the casino and now into Mirabeau and we are going to lick the stamp and send it into Mirabeau and we do gain that position and we're up into P16 because I don't really know what our net position now hopefully it is still a P4 but we'll have to wait till later in the race to see now we're on the back of Daniel Kvyat the Russian and we're going to send it to the inside like we did on Giovinazzi a few laps before that one. And now we have Kevin Magnussen in front of us there. And now we're going to go from a classic move. Break late into the Nobel chicane. Get alongside on the outside and try and go around the outside at the back. But we couldn't make it work that time on Kevin Magnussen. Now round the swimming pool through the chicane. Now we're going to go for a kind of arrow of a dive in a way. We couldn't do it there. We kind of actually tapped the back of Magnussen there. And now we're going to have to wait and try and have a go into turns one. 
and down inside we go, we get the job done, but we've gone a bit deep and Magnuson's got the move there back on us and there's contact and we've nearly spun round. That was a heart in mouth moment there. Full lock left just to keep the car in a straight line. You can see that I literally, I raced with a wheel and I literally couldn't turn the wheel any more to the left. Here you can see in slow motion there was the first contact but then it kind of comes over and look you can see there we're just heading towards the barrier i catch it but then i overdo it and take the car back the other way and you can see just how much steering we had to put into the car there just to keep it in a straight line honestly i was well glad i could hold that move and we can still get on with our race. We're still behind Magnuson, and Magnuson's costing me so much time. We've done our classic move though. We're on the outside of Magnuson now, but Magnuson gets the exit, and we still can't get it along the outside. Skipping on another lap. We've pretty much done two laps and a half down the inside of Kevin Magnuson into the hairpin. And now round the outside of the hairpin. Look how close it is. Our left tyre is so close to Magnuson front wing there. But finally, after about two and a half laps, we have got Kevin Magnuson just as Alex Albon makes his stop onto the hard tyres. So, this is crucial now then. All that traffic, have we done enough? And the answer is yes. Alban comes out behind his teammates as well and these two there's as you can see it's just going through there Alban's actually lost out more time to us somehow and to Verstappen as Verstappen goes down and inside we did a switch back there and we do keep P4 so after all of that me thinking that we were going to be so far behind We've actually beat them out. I'm not really too sure how their pace must have really dropped off on those meat on those hard tires. I'm not sure. I think they started on the hards. I'm not. I'm not too sure what I think Verstappen may have started on the hards, but the pace really must have fell off, and that just allowed us to pull away, even though we're having having to get back through the traffic. Here comes Verstappen. You would have seen a minute ago that we had to defend him and we defended him again there and now Albon's seen his chance to get past his teammate they're side by side heading up the hill round the outside Albon is going to try and get the job done into the casino round the casino I think he's still there there's, yes they're still side by side into Mirabeau How, is any one of them going to give up and Albon's going to go round the outside at the Nobel chicane no but um, the lion's hairpin, that's we're not that far around the track yet. And take that P4, but there's yellow flags coming up ahead. Coming up behind us, rather. And they've gone to green, and they've gone to ye yellow again. And it's Alexander Albin out of the race. Virtual safety car for the very first time this season. You would have seen, if you were watching that Albon did drop back and this is what happened to him his engine just went and he goes straight on at the swimming pool and parks his car which is very a bit of a shame for him because he just got past his teammate and he was on for a great result Red Bull were on for a great result P5 and a P6 maybe even a P4 if they managed to get past us who knows but Albans out of the race, the virtual safety car is now ending as we go into the Lone's hairpin and now we can get back racing in this Monaco Grand Prix, we've built up a small gap then to those behind us but we've managed to pace and this is the last lap then, Lewis Hamilton wins the Monaco Grand Prix from one, the one and only Daniel Ricciardo in his Renault. Wow, you've got to give the Aussie man a pat on the back. Anything he does, he'll probably do a shoey. He definitely deserves a shoey for that one. What a result! 
Leclerc is going to come home for P3, but we are going to come home for our best result in the career and a solid P4. Get in there. So Mercedes have won it and what a great race it was. Anthony Davidson, what helped them deliver this result, do you think? I think a large part of the result comes down to temperament. They were able to keep their heads when everyone around them was losing theirs, and that's allowed them to get the best out of the car, to maximise the strategy, and to stay out of trouble. Drivers starting to approach the podium for the victory celebrations. A real team victory today. Everybody played their part. Congratulations then to Mercedes, your race winners today. I'm going to ignore the fact that our driver seemed very annoyed once again about scoring points. We mentioned that quite a bit in Spain. I'm just going to ignore it here, but a fantastic result here in Monaco. I kind of had some hope for Monaco, but really the job was done in qualifying. If it wasn't wet, I don't think we would have had the pace to go up against the top guys, and we probably, would, we probably wouldn't even got points to be honest, if it weren't for qualifying, but we move up into ninth in the constructors, and I believe we move up to 12th in the driver's standings as well, so a solid 12 points for us then, we come back into the, the hub, whatever you want to call it, and we have won the rivalry with George Russell then pretty much, I mean, we only need one more point to win it, as to Guan Yu Zhou, we are we're getting there through the acclaim. I'm not really I still haven't got my head around the acclaim. We get a sponsor bonus. We've done both of them from Quest and Aviator. We did take some damage though but Guan Yu Joy kept it clean and our budget now is a solid six point three eight million into the activities now and we we've done the three days one, two, three days one and one second day just to kind of boost the morale and hopefully get us into the future but we're going to skip on then we've got Baku coming up but guys if you have enjoyed this video make sure to like and subscribe if let me know your thoughts on the race down below and I will see you in Baku Thank you.